Hello. Eight years ago, I played Five Nights at Wario's and Five Nights at Treasure Island for the channel. Don't watch the videos. But anyway, that's the extent of my involvement in Five Nights at Freddy's fan games. Well, well, no, that's not strictly true. There were one or two others that I looked at since then. But in terms of the channel history, that's it. I'm not too familiar with fan games these days, and given my very brief insight into my view on the main games, that really shouldn't surprise anyone. But there is one that I've been made aware of that really has my attention. It's called Post Shift 2. Why do I know about this one? Because I saw Chicken Ninja play it, and then YouTube decided to show me more videos about it. And by that, I mean the same three videos that the guy showed in his video, because no one else cares, I guess. So anyway, what, what's the deal with this game? Well, it's hard. Like, really hard. Now, ridiculously hard games aren't an alien concept to me. So I don't think it would be for anyone else. So there had to be something else for people to be talking about this, right? Oh. When the game was first posted on Game Jolt, it was taken down five hours after it was released. Well, that's interesting. What happened? My very basic understanding of the situation is that it was quite seriously too hard to leave up and it needed to be patched. I think it's a situation of a good idea with a very, very poor execution. Now, naturally knowing this, people would be curious to find out what happened. Why the game was so ridiculously difficult? Why was it taken down? Why are the mechanics the way they are? Why is there so much written in the tutorial? <laughs> and, you know, there's a really easy way to get those questions answered. Asking the developer, let him talk about it and have a little look into his mind. Now, if only there was a good way to do that for a large number of people, say... An interview, maybe? Oh, what's this? My goodness, my favorite person made a video on this game. And there's an interview? Well, goddamn, the angels have spoken. Oh. What the hell did he do now? So, yeah, he made a video on the game and interviewed the developer. And it was fucking abysmal. Generally, if you're conducting an interview, you want to avoid confrontational or aggressive language, and you absolutely should not fucking cut off the speaker. Not that I'm saying he did that here, D totally not. You need to be tactful, not overly blunt. Keep your tone either neutral or positive. For example, I am abrasive and blunt as fuck with pretty much everything that I say. So I'm not gonna pretend like I'm good at interviewing someone. So you know what I do? I don't do that. And I'm not one to criticize anyone's age on this platform, but... Well, there's a reason 19-year-olds aren't interview hosts. Especially if it's related to something that they might have a personal or emotional investment in, say their favorite franchise. Anyway, I watched the video and people were mostly criticizing him for the interview part, but I thought a large majority of the whole video was strange. Shit, I, I don't even know what's going on here. What in the world is Alphabet Lore Roblox Horror Game? Are you gonna Bro, talk about the game at some point? Let, let, let's, let's just jump in. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. I'm not going to show the whole video, I know you're here for the interview part, but there are pieces that I want to share first. Instead, I'm going to be explaining the lore around the release of Post Shift 2. What happened the day it came out? Why it was taken down only 5 hours after it came out on Halloween night? The aftermath of the game being taken down? The 12 hour livestream I did with Fiznom, watching him play the entire game? And finally, an interview with the creator of the game himself? Jack 25 to get to the bottom of some of the mysteries surrounding the release of Post Ship 2. So strap in everybody, 
this is going to be one of my craziest videos yet. By the end of this, you will all know the truth about Post Shift 2. But first, a little background. Solid plan, but we'll see how it's carried out. Right away, I want to point something out. I don't like his presentation here. He hasn't even talked about the game yet, and already he has the game in partially the developer painted in a negative light, purely through his choice of words. This might be a preference thing on my part, I get that, but look, if I don't like a game, I'll straight up tell you, and then I'll tell you why. I present everything from my end, how I see things, what I think, why I think it, and I will let you come to your own conclusions. That creates discussion and encourages people to think for themselves, something that I am a firm believer in. But, I don't know, this just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. From his initial intro, I raise the question, is it possible to beat Post Shift 2 without losing your sanity? To his fake laugh, yeah, I'm gonna give that one a big fat no. <laughs> to laying out what he's doing in the video, putting an emphasis on the lengths of time, taken down after five hours, a 12 hour live stream, and then this is one of my craziest videos yet, and you'll know the truth. I don't know. It feels like it's coming from a place of bad faith. Like, I don't like the Five Nights at Freddy's games. I don't. But that doesn't mean I won't give them the respect that they deserve when I make my video on them. Whenever that may be. Today. But he's also made some other stuff, like this Baldi's Basic FNAF game. Fun fact, Markiplier played this one. That's kind of interesting. Why? What's interesting about that? Mark plays just about everything. What's interesting is that he almost exclusively doesn't play Five Nights at Freddy's fan games. Our Jack has a pretty strong background in the community and is a pretty talented guy. We should be in good hands, right? Well, in theory, we could have been in good hands here, but there were some crucial mistakes made during the development of Post Shift 2 that led to it being one of the hardest, most unfair, most insane FNAF fan games ever made. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Ah, uh, yes. The classic technique of saying a few positive things and then throwing in a soft negative to make it not seem like you're shitting on him for no fucking reason. I'll call out a bad game. I will. But not the fucking developer. You have no idea what's going on on their end. If they made a bonehead move, then that's what it is. But you don't know that until you talk to them. And you shouldn't fucking call them out like that until you've shown your little interview to your viewers. The first notable person who tried playing it on release night is this guy. Listen, if Google Translate can't pronounce his username, I sure as hell aren't gonna try. But you all probably know him. It's the guy who uploads a million FNAF and other trending topic game videos a day, and milks literally everything to the ground. Oh uh, yeah, like you have any room to talk. This guy could potentially get his own video someday. There's probably some interesting stuff here. Like, would you bat an eye if it was exposed that this channel was run by an AI at this point? Um... I don't care? I don't know who this person is. I'm not on Twitch. But people stream daily. That's kind of the whole shtick once you get on there, you know? A, a live stream platform. Now, I'm not saying it is. I know literally nothing. Just speculation here. But, like, would it shock you at all? Anyway, I bring up Mr. Puppet PFP because I guess they're in their streamer era now and live stream Rainbow Friends new updates or some dumb shit. I, I don't even know what's going on here. Again, don't know who this person is. Still don't care. And it's Twitch. Of course he's going to stream on a streaming site. What in the world is Alphabet Lore Roblox Horror Game? Bro, can you move the fuck on? Holy shit. Anyway, when he's not busy playing Rainbow Friends or whatever, he'll occasionally still upload and stream FNAF stuff. Or whatever. Like, it's a fucking crime to play anything other than FNAF. Not that you would do anything so ludicrous as to play something that isn't Five Nights at Freddy's related. Oh, no. God help you if you ever do that. This was the case when Post Shift 2 came out. He hopped on stream and played the game silently for like an hour. Now, I want you all to think about this guy for a second. Let's say he's not an AI, 
and he's just a guy who plays all these games all day, every day, for like eight years straight at this point. You'd expect someone who's been playing these games for that long to be able to get past night one of a FNAF fan game, right? Being someone as solely invested in mechanics as you are, I would expect you to fully understand that playing multiple different games for eight years does not mean you're going to be a god at a random indie fan game. However, after like an hour of streaming, he never beat Night One. He just gave up. Yes, this person or robot AI. This is what we call running a joke into the ground who has been playing FNAF games for eight years, could not beat night one of Post Shift 2. Clearly something was up here. His next stream was just him looking at the extras menu or something. I don't really know. But what it proves is that he ended up just cheating his way to the end of the game because there is a 0% chance he beat the entire game off recording. This man's entire computer activity is uploaded daily at this point. Ain't no way that happened. Unlucky for him, the jump scares aren't in the extras menu. Sadly, he will not be able to add the jump scares from this game into World of Jump Scares Part 234. I know, a moment of silence for this national tragedy. So, firstly, if you're gonna act like a smarmy and discredit someone and call them out on cheating like that, you damn well better have some kind of proof. Otherwise, fuck you. And I'm not aware of any ways to cheat in this game, so extra fuck you. You're gonna say this guy cheated how? What could he have done that would either make the game easier or advance to the end of the game without doing anything? You cannot make that claim. You cannot cheat in this game. I will show you. All right, so here we have Post Shift 2 Part A and Part B. <clears throat> and over here we have our MMF Applications folder, which is where you would go to cheat in these Click Team games. Let's go ahead and open up a few of these. Notepad, there we go. All right, FNAF 1. You have the Knights, the first star, second star, and third star. The Knights, you can change the value between one and seven for each knight. And the other three, they're just a toggle value. So if you have the stars, the value will be one. If you do not have the stars, the value will be zero. All right, let's change, let's get his favorite game. Sister location, same idea. Whether you saw the intro, if you want to watch it again, change the value to zero. The night that you're on, this, this right here that says current, that's your nights. You change that between one and five. And then whether you have three stars and whether you have the key card to play Enter Night. Pretty simple. Let's clear this. And let's look at Post Shift 2. It's a little different, yeah? You can see right away, it's not set up the way the others are. We can toggle full screen, v-sync, and the intro video, but here's the thing. If we go to nights and change the value, let's say I want to skip to night two. And save. And we'll close out of that. And let's get in the game. Spacebar. Huh. Well, that's weird. It didn't take effect. The night's not available. Let's get out of this. Let's take a look at the file again. Huh. Huh. Weird. It reverted back. I can't tell you if it works after you beat night one. I haven't tried yet. But ultimately, it doesn't matter. Because if this guy he's talking about couldn't beat night one and gave up, he wouldn't be able to cheat the extras menu open. Why? Because if you try to get into part B, it kicks you out. Watch. Please complete the first part of the game before accessing part B. Let me wait a little bit. And it kicks you out. And if you can't change part A's file, you cannot cheat this game. Secondly, who cares if he did? He got tired of the game and wanted to look at the extras. Oh no, what a tragedy. And thirdly, this is where I started getting a weird vibe from the video. Like, 
Do we really need to spend three minutes talking about some guy's Twitch channel history? Who gives a fuck? Can we talk about the game now? Oh yeah, maybe I should touch on the story for a second here. Okay, so you play as a guy whose name may or may not be Thomas. I'm still not sure about this. Thomas needs to like, avenge the guy who you play as in Post Shift 1 by going deeper into the location and solving some mysteries. But there's these like crazy animatronics that can shapeshift. And there's a bunch of different classes of animatronics such as Revenant and Remnant and Minotaur. And did I mention the beginning of this game is literally a crazy insane killer animatronic telling you he's gonna actually murder you? No. No, I, I need to stop. I need to stop. The story of this game is too much for me, and I'm doctor diagnosed allergic to story in FNAF games, so we're moving on here. I'm done. So. Okay, do you seriously just hate stories that fucking much? I mean, would it actually kill you to give enough of a shit to at least try to understand it for people, or pay attention enough for people watching your video to know what the story is? Like I said before, the only point of interest for Five Nights at Freddy's games, for me, and really a large majority of games in general is story, narrative. So I just do not understand the blatant aversion to anything related to knowing why any of this shit is happening in the first place. I won't get into it again, not in this video, but I'll briefly say this. The narrative is the reason for why things happen and it serves to help you makes sense of some of the bullshit that is happening. It's like those meme videos titled something like, I'm never skipping a cutscene again. If you just skip the story, then absolutely nothing will make any sense whatsoever. So, not entirely saying that's the case with this game, but maybe not paying any attention to the story could be a contributor to why it felt so... How, do you, how did you put it? Insane? But, you know, you can't be asked enough to check, so you'll never fucking know, but whatever. Sorry, that, that was mean. All right. I'm done bitching about the video. Let's skip to why we're all here. After finally watching someone play the entire game, I really only had more questions than answers. So many things just didn't add up to me. So I only had one option. DM rjack25 on Twitter to see if he was down to do an interview. He agreed. It's time, everyone. It's time to learn the truth about Post Shift 2. What's up with the playtesters? Did he mean to make the game as hard as it actually was on release? What was going on when he took the game down? All this and more will be answered right now. The first thing of note from my interview with Arjak have to be the questions about the difficulty in playtesters. Starting from the top, I asked him if he intended the game to be as hard as it was on launch. Fair questions to ask. Let's uh, let's see uh, how he handles it. Please stop. So, the game is hard. It's very hard. Yes. Did you mean yeah, did you mean to make the game as hard as it was on the launch version? No, but um, I think part of the uh, the big problem was that I was I did not have enough um I wasn't reaching out reaching out to enough people to test the game, so it was just me testing mm -hmm. it. And because I'd been playing it for like so long, it felt easy to me. But obviously, I I needed to get other people to test it because it is absolutely ridiculous for the RNG, and I know. A fair question, but worded strongly. I guess we should start with uh, the biggest question to ask. As a lot of players mentioned, the game is very, very hard. Was the difficulty intentional? Would have been a more tactful and neutral way to ask the question. You're not directing anything at him. And I'm satisfied with the answer as well. Arjak knows that he should have reached out to more people for playtesting. And that is a big trap to fall into as well. Not just with games, but with story writing as well. It all comes back to the one golden rule that a lot of people will constantly preach. Always have someone else look over your work. And the more people, the better. So, the RNG, I know that. so that, that was another question of mine. I guess that leads into it. Hey, 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 um, hey, um, real quick, um, did you just cut him off? The playtesters. There's two credited. What version of the game did yeah. they play? When did they play it? Because there's so many theories with the playtesters. I'm super curious. God, the tone for these questions is just all wrong. Make no mistake. Once again, these are questions that I would ask if I was doing this. But 
Dude, if you're gonna ask the man a question, can you actually ask him a question? Like, straight up. Well, since we're on the subject of playtesters, I saw that only two were credited, and that actually leads into my next question. Uh, what version of the game did they play, and when in your development did they play it? I'm gonna be honest, the, the playtesters, they, they gave it like a few attempts, but they didn't really play Right, okay. Okay. First, do not interrupt. This is an interview, not a conversation. You called it an interview. You are treating it like a conversation. You pick one. Second, once again, tone. Play right, okay. You're making it sound like you're catching someone in a lie or you're uncovering something. You're asking the man a question. He is answering it. Shut your mouth when he's talking. They, they, they found the game too difficult themselves and um, they didn't really, you know, they, I think uh, one of them got to like 5am and he did say that it was quite difficult and that like, especially with like Revenant Freddy, just, um, you know, the whole thing you have to go all the way to the end of the aisle and deploy. Right. It was like, you know, diff bit too difficult for them to do and that. And I, I don't blame them. Did you, did you make so, any tweak? I know he does it a lot. I talked about it once, that's all I'm going to do. Anyway, during an interview, this is a fairly difficult sort of area to get through. I can't say for certain without looking at him, but he definitely sounds nervous, like this isn't something he's particularly thrilled to talk about. Uh, the next obvious question to me would be, well, if they said it was too difficult, why didn't you listen to them? But obviously you can't say that, <laughs> at least... Not that directly. Uh, a follow-up question to something like that is a real gray area. You can do it, but it has to be asked the right way. So the next step, after he's done talking, would be... I see. Uh, were there any changes made to the game after your playtesters were done? Um, that, that's the best way I can think to word it. I, I really don't know. Did you did you make any tweaks from those um, playtesters, or like was there a harder version of the launch version before the playtesters? Uh, it's not the worst phrasing I heard. I mean, mostly okay. the same. The only difference was um, originally you couldn't use a, so you'd be like at the end of the aisle and that you wouldn't be able to use W and like A and D to go uh, like so D to go right and A to go left and D forward that forward that wasn't originally in the game you had to click like the oh and there's only specific areas where okay you could, like use controls there you have it folks the play testers didn't get very far in the game and thought it was super hard too at the end of the day it just seemed like the feedback from the two play testers wasn't taken into consideration enough and only some things such as being able to move with wasd were added thanks to said play tests next up i was curious to know what was going on when r jack took the game down Okay, so with that cut the way you did it, I'm fairly confident that he was not done talking and you just cut it off to interject your little recap there as if we didn't understand what he just said. Also, why do you have his picture tilted like that so he can't see the whole thing? What's that about? I mean, I do agree. That does seem to be like what he said, but... You could be a little less over the top about it. I mean, you're not the ace attorney here. You're not uncovering some big mystery. But here's my question. You have it, folks. The playtesters didn't get very far in the game and thought it was super hard, too. At the end of the day, it just seemed like the feedback from the two playtesters wasn't taken into consideration enough. And only some things, such as being able to move with WASD, were added thanks to said playtests. Next up, I was curious to know what was going on when r -Jack took the game down. Why?! You found out that's what happened. You never bothered to ask why. For someone who, quote, went from not very interested at all to what the hell is this thing and how do I figure out what happened here, you don't seem all that interested in figuring out what happened and why it happened. You do, however, seem very eager to condemn rather than ask and find out why 
he made minimal changes despite the feedback. Instead, you skip from that to why it was pulled. Game was put up and it was taken down in like five hours. What was yeah. going through your head at that time? Because the people, a couple people were streaming it. I forget his name, but it's that guy with the puppet PFP he plays every game. He was streaming it and he couldn't beat Night One. I thought it was really funny because yeah. he, he plays literally everything. And in the title, I can't beat Night One. He just gave up. And then the game was taken down. What was going through your head all that time? Just tell me. Of all the ways to ask that question, you somehow picked the worst way possible. What was going through your head? Are you fucking serious? Then layering on rambling about the streamer, unnecessary to say the least. What was going through your head? Just tell me. You should not be interviewing people if this is your approach to getting your questions answered. Jesus fucking Christ. In this situation, I think an honest, straightforward question would have been appropriate. Why was the game taken down so quickly? You don't need to ramble and make the dev feel worse by telling him a streamer gave up on trying to play his game. You are you are addressing some of the issues that people are having. And I think, I, you know, what? It's, it's a learning experience for, for everybody involved, obviously, mostly you, but everybody involved, it's a learning experience. Can you be likable for, like, a minute? The guy knows, okay? You don't have to keep beating it into him. I have to skip from 2642 to 2842 because that's when he actually asks his next question. So we're going to get into some of the tutorial stuff. Fun. Nope. We're going to get into some of the tutorial stuff. Fun. So in the game, there are multiple mechanics that aren't explained question mark. I'm not 100% sure. I have a couple examples here. Um... Yeah. The second monitor on night five, the mini one, I, I don't think that's on the tutorial, which is part of it because you need to do the tasks. And then, yeah. um, shoot, there, there are some other ones, but that was that was the main one I've written down. Is that was that just like a outdated tutorials in the the writing of the game, or what was that? I think I sort of tried to explain it, but I don't think I, I definitely did. Okay. But I didn't put enough information about the, the side panel and how you're supposed to utilize it. And hopefully with updates, I can try and make changes to the explanation of the side panel and all that. Yeah, okay. All right, this is a bit of a weird one. First, yes, sliding in that quick fun when you introduce the tutorials topic, just fuck off with that. So you're going to claim that there are multiple examples of instructions not being present in the tutorials, but only wrote down one of them and didn't bother to go back in the stream VOD that you clearly have access to, to look for the other examples to be able to tell Arjak, the fucking developer, about them. Poorly worded question, but, you know, what else is new? Then the last thing... Maybe I'm just not getting what he's saying, but it sounds like Arjak isn't exactly answering the question. The question was, there are things that you have to do in the game that aren't explained to you. Here's an example. Now, this bit is word for word, and it will be the credit that I give Arjak here. Is that... Was that just a... a outdated tutorials in the the writing of the game, or what was that? Bro, what did you just say? What are you even trying to ask? So, I mean, I get why Arjak didn't exactly answer it, because I don't even know what he was trying to ask. I think what he was going for was, were the tutorials outdated? But I can't be sure. He pushes on about the tutorials. I'm skipping it because it's honestly two questions that could have been condensed into one. In the tutorials for the game, there's a lot of information presented all at once and then some segments where no information is given on certain mechanics. Can you explain that a little bit? For the first segment. You beat it, then you unlock the next tutorial kind of thing. Because when you, when you see it all, it's like, yeah. what the fuck am I doing? It's like so much to look at. Way wrong thing to be saying. Development of Post Shift 2, that the amount of tutorials you're kind of just like shoving in the player's face would be too much? Or were you, were you really in that mindset where like, this is reasonable because you were making it? 
This is going to be the last time I talk about his phrasing because I feel like by now I don't need to point out where it's bad or explain why it's bad. Telling the developer he's shoving tutorials in the player's face is not how you want to phrase that. Thought that would have been fucking obvious, but hey, we learn something new every day, don't we? This one, this one someone asked, I think. I put it down because I think people will be curious about it, but the answer is probably very obvious, so you don't have to linger on this one, but... Straight up telling the dude he's interviewing that he doesn't have to talk much when answering a question. Bro, what fucking drugs are you on? The fuck's wrong with you? Why use Click Team for a game like this that's so big that it had to be split into two parts? Um, yeah, uh, just a limit in my knowledge of coding. Um, ideally, like, I definitely need to try and learn a new engine, especially for this type of game. Yeah, it's because I, I, I really just only know that, Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I thought the answer And talking over him. Glad we got our bases covered. It would be. I, I assume you yeah. just only knew Click Team. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, this is a personal pet theory of mine, and I'm pretty sure it's wrong, but I'm still going to ask it because I'm curious as fuck. So, there's a trailer from like two years ago that shows multiple of the gameplay styles. But when I was playing through Nights 1 through 3, it felt to me like... A six night game compressed into three nights. Like the difficulty, that's how it felt. Cause there's so many animatronics on night one, night two and night three. It feels like it was supposed to be strung across six. Was that ever the case? Or is that just kind of like, what was that all about? Um, I think... I'm not gonna make you watch Arjax struggle to answer this. At this point, he just sounds done with this mockery of a fucking interview and I don't blame him. But I will tune us back in for this. I think it's just a case of like, I just wanted there to be more content than just the player being in one place. Obviously, there came a lot of complications with doing it. Yeah, so you're working on patches for the game. Cuts him off and doesn't even bother to acknowledge his response. Just full send on moving on to closing it out. I'm stopping it there. Of all bullshit, disrespectful, assholish things you've done throughout that interview. That was the top. I get why people said this was a missed opportunity. Because it was. Right away, just from the first question, it was clear that Arjek understood what mistakes he made, why they were made, and it sounds like he has a pretty strong grasp on how to move forward. So there is absolutely zero need to continuously beat him over the head with it. It's okay to ask the questions. They're questions that should be asked so that we can understand everything. But you could pepper those in with questions that he would probably be happy to talk about like what his inspiration for the game was what's different between this game and post shift one what ideas he has for future games you could have asked him about what the story was but you don't give a fuck so of course that won't happen